This is Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with Macklin's Jim Marbella. I'm joined by Tony the, the Rhino. The Giles. Rhino, Tony Giles. Me, women love me and children want to be me. Tony Giles, aka the Rhino. Um, it's the first time we've actually How you doing, spoke. Yeah, I remember we had a, mm. uh, a little discussion on Facebook before. A dispute. A dispute where um, well, someone was using my name to basically flag you off and. No, fake account. Fake account. I, what women do. And just a woman scorn. Let's just say a woman scorn, eh? I don't know if it was a woman or a man. It could definitely have been a child. A woman, definitely a woman, eh? <laughs> um, so, what's going on? You fought a few weeks ago yeah, uh, at the Troxy. Yeah, a few weeks ago at the Troxy. I'm British World European Champion. I've got three titles at the minute. I've had 25 pro fights, won 23 of them, lost two by split decision. One for Alex Reid for the middleweight title and one against Big Ben Smith for the heavyweight title. But apart from that, I just, like, I've had a good career, big be honest with you. Boxed all my life since I've been six year old. So I'm 31 in a few weeks' time. So now I'm going to put it right in. I've just been offered a fight out in, well, I've just signed a contract, a fight out in uh, Miami, I think, uh, 5th of August, I think it is. It's a little bit different than most fights because this is the first ever sanctioned bare knuckle fight. And as I say, the Rolling Stones magazine's um, sponsoring it. And I've got to do a few little bits and pieces out there. But Tyson Fury's doing the um, the commentary on it, and I want to be flying out there with him. As I say, for you, what, what better do you want than to be flying out there with a boxing world champion heavyweight? You know, and he's a lovely fella as well. And um, that's for the light heavyweight um, title, and for the heavyweight title, uh, Bobby Gunn, which is a good friend of mine now. Um, I was a little bit of a slag before, really. I shouldn't have done it, all right. But it shows you good things come to good people because he is a proper man. And I, 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 I sent a message out on Facebook, which I shouldn't have done really. I should have spoke to him first, um, saying about having a fight. He got in contact, he sent a good gentleman's reply back. He got in contact with me and look what has come out of it. Now I've gone over there, I'm gonna be staying with Bobby and I'm gonna be fighting alongside of Bobby. You know, so I just want everyone to know there's no Ill, Ill feelings behind between me and Bobby whatsoever and all that gentleman's doing is help me out. So Bobby, my man, thank you very much but for getting me to fight. Sorry about the little bit of dispute, but that's it now. So for people that don't know, um, Tony, what was the initial dispute with, or so-called dispute, should we say, with, with Bobby Gunn? See, the situation is, um, when you get to a certain level at boxing or, or cage fighting or any sport that you're in, you get, it's hard to get a fight. When you've got a few big titles, it's hard to get a fight. And if you're training every day of your life, three times, three times a day sometimes, it is your life. So you, so you, so all of that, you have to be paid for it. Right, I've got kids. I ain't got no woman at the minute because I like my clothes too much, but I've got five kids and I want them to have a good life. So therefore, I, as many fights as I can get, as much money as I can generate, right, that's what I want to do. And I feel like it's hard for, my promoter said to me, well, my last fight, I knocked down 37 seconds and, and it took three months to get that fight with that person. So um, after that knockout, I thought to myself, it's going to be the next fight, it's going to be another four to six months. I thought, this ain't no good. So I was talking to myself, so I thought I'm going to have to go back to the, back to the old school days. So um, I spoke to um, one of my friends and he said that there's this American gypsy, he said, if I any travelling man, 50 grand. So I didn't really look too much into it. I just had a couple of looks at his fight. I thought he's a good fighter. I thought I could do some money. So um, therefore, I, I sent a message out to him, which I shouldn't have done really. He wasn't very professional about me. So I sent a message out to him for us to have a fight. And he sent a gentleman's reply back. And with that, it just got me in the heart. Do you know what I mean? I thought to myself, what, 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 what am I leading to? What am I doing, doing these silly things? I'm a professional world champion fighter. You know, but at the end of the day, it don't pay my bills, does it? So that's why I've done it for. But, look, only good's come out of it, it's cool, do you know what I mean? He's got me a title for a, a light, of, light heavyweight title fight, but I'm hopefully what's going to be a massive, massive show. So, you're part of, obviously, like a triple header world title, bare knuckle bill. Yeah, um, first ever sanctioned one. Headlined by Bobby Gunn yeah. and... Uh, co-main event. Your co-main event. Yeah. And so... That, and that all come from cool. that all come from, yeah, watching a bit of YouTube, thinking to myself I could do with a day's pay here, you know. It could have been a bad day's pay. It could have been not a day's pay. It could have been a, an hospital job. Do you know what I mean? But that's the chance I'm willing to take. Well, with any fighter, you know yourself, Coke, 
All right, when you get out there and you have a fight, you train every single day of your life, all right, you get out there and have a fight, it's a dark tunnel, mate. You don't know what's at the end of that tunnel, do you? You know, you could come, you could hit a wall, or you could, or you could glide through there as easy as anything, you know? So, it's just a big question mark there. But I'm prepared to do it. Obviously, from fighting terms, you're, you're more known, uh, or shall I say, best known uh, for your sort of much anticipated fight you had with Alex Reid a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was a, bit, that was a big one. I think I won that fight. Um, definitely did. I gave him three stone away in weight. Um, that's a lot of weight to give away, you know, in any fight. Art. I took the fight at the last minute, was doing a documentary around it. It came out on London Live the other day, it was called Beyond the Cage. So if anybody's watched that, fi watched that film, they'll see the build up to that fight. I was a lot underweight for number one. For number two, it, I took it on short notice. Number three, I still won. That fight, one point, a split decision. If they want to say, if them judges want to say he's won, fair enough. But direct message to Alex, all right, I will fight you in the phone box, fight you anywhere. Not because I don't like you, just because I know I can beat you. I've done it once, I'll do it again. And you know, go on, yeah, go on. No, no, you go. We've done, it. We've done that fight for kids with cancer. All right, we raised a hell of a lot of money for little children that look like losing their lives. So therefore, I'm not, I'm not one bit bitter about it. Because you know what I mean? If, if that's one loss on my card, we maybe save the little child's life. So, main thing is I got in there, I've done what I had to do. He knows because he's pulled out three for times we're supposed to have a rematch and three times he's pulled out after that because he knows to put a better size on, done a bit of jailbird training and I'm ready. Travellers within the fight game mm. um, have had probably more attention over the last sort of two or three years. Billy Joe Saunders, yeah. icon. I like it. Billy Joe and my little brother Ruben. My little brother Ruben used to be a pro boxer. And he, um, my amateur boxer first of all, he used to box with Billy Joe and all that. And I've seen Billy since a little boy grow up and I couldn't believe it. I always said to everyone, him and his brother Tom, to see them boys, I said they're special. They're special to everyone. And then now look at Billy Joe now, world champion. Tyson, I don't really know Tyson that well. He lives down the other end of the country, but I know a lot of people knows him. I know a lot of his cousins as well. And he's a lovely fellow. D despite all that mad, the madness, what people say about him, all right? He's, he's a character and he can fight. Look at him. He beat Klitschko. No one else could. No, absolutely. Um, when you talk to Billy Joe Saunders and, and Tyson Fury, they've always had this uh, view that they're sort of, because of their uh, traveller background and heritage, that yeah. they are discriminated against. We are discriminated against. Listen, we are discriminated. I don't care what anybody says. I've been doing this game now. I'm a, I'm a cage fighter, but I've been doing this game for, I've been professional for nearly nine years now. That's a long time to be professional. And every big fight that I've ever had that's ever come up and gone, gone, gone over me, always being a gypsy, it's like sort of tore that away. I was supposed to fight in UFC three times, I was supposed to fight in UFC. And, and the scouts, every single time, the scouts has been warned off by other promoters that we don't, they, that they don't need me and my crew going to them fights, even though that he's a good fighter, it's what comes with me. Now, what comes with me? I've had 25 pro fights. There's probably been one argument in all them 25 fights. Do you know what I mean? And that was the very first time I fought, um, and it wasn't even pro, it was semi-pro. And me and Alex got fighting, um, we got into an argument after the cage fight, and which was, it was all in the front pages of a paper on the news at 10 when he was with Katie Price. It was big gypsy brawl. That was, that was in 2008. So, so like that was the first and last only ever real that they've been at my shows. Apart from that, everyone comes there with respect, business people, they come there, they buy the tickets, they enjoy the show. And, you know, the kids, we have kids there, the kids love it, all right? And they've, 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 they hold all that against me, all right, over there being one little argument, all right? Stopping me from going across the water and earning millions of pounds, because I don't care, Conor McGregor, I'm, he's a featherweight, or I can do what Conor does. I can do no different than what he can do. He knows that. We've been in training camps together. All right, he's a flyweight. All right, he got, he got the break. All right, if he was a gypsy, he wouldn't. Do you understand what I mean? It's a lot harder for us, a lot harder. So but them I, boys, I rate them because they've, 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 they've stuck in there and they've done it. And that's just what you've got to do. So and I'm prepared to do the same thing. Every fight that comes up against me, all right, I'm not going to go in there and leave it to the judges. I'm going in there and I'm taking them out. Simple as that. Do you, uh, you, do you take inspiration? Obviously, you've been fighting a long time. Yeah. Um, but do you still take inspiration by seeing people like, like I said, Billy Joe Saunders, WBO middleweight champion, Tyson Fury went out and done what no one backed him to do. Yeah. Beat Klitschko, become... I, I backed him from... Do you know why? Yeah. Because he got into Klitschko's head. He 
he done what a travelling man does. We beat him mentally before we get in there. They're mentally beat, like Mike Tyson, all right? Mike Tyson's a black gypsy, I'm telling you, all right? Because he got in there and he had a beat before he even started fighting. And that's what Tyson does, that's what Billy Joe does, that's what Tony Giles does. Right, we're, before we get in that case, before we get in that ring, we're travellers, all right? We fuck their brains up before before the bell even goes ding, ding. They know they're beat. How do you believe it's a psychological it's edge a you have? Uh, I don't believe, I know. I know that they is, all right? Because, let me tell you, every gypsy, right, there's a question mark behind every every traveller there is, all right? It's like you don't know the past of him. You don't know about gypsies. The, the normal people don't. We're gypsy. We know what we can do, and that's why we're world champions. Tyson Fury, um, you said you, you just said that you don't know him that well, but you know what the press say about him and the sort yeah, of crit listen, criticism he's had since becoming world champion. All the criticism I've had, right? All the criticism he's had, that's papers, all right? That's that's paper stories. That's so somebody can earn a quick buck by talking rubbish and publicity. It's good, it, it, it is good to have publicity behind you because you haven't got to be a fighter. You've got to have a bit of character as well to be known in this world, you know? And Tyson Fury is a character, okay? He's right in what he says in, in a lot of... But the way that he comes across and he says it, they blow it out of proportion because I agree with him. I agree with what he stands for. My mum's born again Christian, all right? I, I, I'm a Christian, I believe in God, all right? But my mum's born again, she goes to church every night of her life, all right? And everything that Tyson says, I relate to him. I relate 100% because I hear it from my mum. We've been brought up that way, all right? So, so like Muslims, they've been brought up to be Muslims, yeah, okay? You don't see the press and the slagging them off. Do you understand what I mean? We, 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 the way we've been brought up, but it's all right for them to slag us off. No. No, not at all. It ain't right. We, we, listen, we are, we are gypsies. Are a culture not to be messed with. All right, and we've got more respect and honour than any other culture out there. Quote me on it. You've had a lot of negative stories in the press yourself yeah. over the last sort of couple of years. Yeah, I got shot the other day. That got blew out of the shot in the face. That was before my last fight. That got blew out of proportion. Uh, time when I went to prison, I was on remand for eight months. So I looked like getting a life sentence. When I got to court, got not guilty, obviously, but they put me eight months, nearly ruined my life, nearly ruined my career, couldn't see my kids, not nice at all, all because I'm a gypsy fighter. And when it got to court, I got apologies from the judge. That apology ain't gonna bring eight, eight months in a high security prison back, is it? 23 and a half hour day, bang up, in an eight by four cell for something that I didn't do. It's not nice, and all my, I could have had, lost all my belts, my sponsors, I've got a sponsor, Daily Sport, Grant Miller, thank you very much. He, he's a good guy. I've had a three-year contract, just signed another three-year contract with him. So that's good. Um, Spearman Rhinos, like, I know Gentleman's Club. All these guys know where it is, all right. Um, yeah, they've sponsored me for a while now. I nearly lost those. So it's like, they, I nearly lost all my career. I was, I, I, yeah, pretty much my future was going downhill drastically. And all of a sudden, when I got in front of the judge, he said, look, the truth prevailed, all right? I wasn't guilty, I got let off with it, I come out, I've had a warm-up fight straight away to defend my titles, knocked the geezer out in 37 seconds, now I'm fighting in Miami. So, so it is good to come out of it at the end. Let me ask your opinion about, um, obviously, a couple of months ago, there was a, like I said, the, the, the story was gathering up pace of Conor McGregor possibly fighting Floyd Mayweather. Um, MMA versus boxing. Yeah. Well, what's your thoughts on that? Should, should they be doing that? Well, listen, I've just took a bare knuckle boxing fight, first ever sanctioned one, for the light of his weight title. I don't even check the fighter out. I haven't even checked him out because, like, obviously it's boxing and they've got to be at the top of their. But I do MMA. I've done MMA, I've been pro for, for a long time now. So is Conor McGregor. All right, MMA. Is a whole different ball game. There's 32 different fighting contact sports, all right, all put together in one. Boxing is one sport. All right, I love boxing. I've been brought up on it. Boxing is my forte. I've done it all my life. Okay, that's 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 the sport that I love. But that's one sport in mixed into a hell of a lot of others. So if Floyd Mayweather thought that he was going to get in the cage with Conor or, or the ring, Conor McGregor, and use and Conor McGregor was just about allowed to use his hands. Well, it'd be a one-sided fight. But if Floyd Mayweather walked into that cage or ring, whatever it was, and Conor McGregor could do his thing, Floyd Mayweather would not last two rounds. 
As I said, I'll put my career on that. So you, it's basically, you know, the sport that they would, like I said, either boxing or MMA, whoever the... Like fighting? Yeah. They're, they're, it's the same meat, different gravy, pretty much. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The same meat, they're all fighters, but the gravy's different. Tell you, with cage fighting, it's thick. When you get in there, you're looking at, you know, I've, I've seen people, after I've walked out of the cage, and I've seen people, and I looked at the side, I'm getting, like, obviously MMA, you get safe MMA, they, they've got to check you all out, give you your medical after the fight as well as before. So after the fight, while you're getting your medical, I've seen fighters there going into cardiac arrest, I've seen fighters lose their eyes, like it's a gruesome, gruesome, broken arms, broken legs, broken, and you're sat there and you're around all them people and they're led there on stretchers and you think to yourself, why do I do this for? Why do I do it for? Why don't I just do boxing? I can earn more money out of it, um, not as hard training and not, not as violent. But this is what this is what I love doing, as simple as that. So this is what, this is what I've got to do, this is my pathway, it's my future. How many more years have you got left doing this? My, I reckon, well, until, I, until, until, until I've lost my fire, until my fire stopped burning. At the minute, I'm, just, I, I, I'm, not, I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. I'm at full flame at the minute. I'll take on it. I will get in there. As long as it's professional, I'll get in there and fight any man. I don't care what way. I walked into the heavyweight title after I fought Alex Reid. I fought Big Ben Smith. And I got Alex Reid three stone away, mate. I got Big Ben Smith four and a half stone away, mate. That, no, you don't see that, do you? I walked in there at 14 stone. Yeah, and, and he was four and a half stone heavier than me. And I was there, one point I lost by, and I was there, final round, I was still still exchanging blows with him. All right, so that takes a good man to do that. Six-time world champion, Ben Smith was. And I got in there with a bigger man, more experience, and if that judge wants to say at the end of it, two fights I've lost, I don't mind talking about them, because they haunt me every day of my life. So if I could have a rematch with a pair of them, I would do that one tomorrow and one next week. All right, but both of them won't fight me. They underestimated me. They thought I was a little guy going to get in there and they was going to bully me, but that didn't happen. And now that's why they won't rematch me. Do you know about my bare knuckle history? No, not really, Co. No? No. I was um, the Sri Lankan bare knuckle champion. Was you? 2014. We could get an international one on the go, couldn't we? We could do it now if you we want. We could do get it one now. Always hold the camera up. Oh, yeah. No, we'll put the camera on the fence. See how yeah. on the fence? You look like you're ready to go anyway, so. <laughs> Always ready. Um, all right, well, listen, Tony. Listen, Krugan, love you like a fat kid loves cake, brother. All right, thanks for doing this little interview. Remember, everybody, the Rhino's going to America. Miami, we're having it. Big thank you, Tom Saunders, as well, for doing this for me. His brother, Johnny, love you all. Tony Giles, the Rhino, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And uh, listen, I'm sure we'll catch up with you uh, soon.